hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making some crayon boats. Well, it's kid day here on the show today and it's a fantastic opportunity to get your children out to your shop, work together to make a project that they're going to love for years to come. And what I'm talking about is crayon boats. Now, I had never heard of crayon boats prior to just a little while ago and maybe you haven't either, but they look something like this. And I saw this on a woodworking forum that I've been involved with for quite some time. And when I saw these things, I thought, oh my gosh, what a great project to get the kids involved. And that's what we're going to do today. Well, it all starts off with drawing out what kind of a boat you want to make. So let's head over to the bench and see how we can do with this. Well, the nature of this design is quite simple. And what we're going to do is start with some layout lines. I will be making a template here just in case I need to make more for future reference. Um, but it's up to you whether you do this or not. What we need to start off with is three half inch spaced parallel lines. So one at half an inch one at one inch, one at one and a half. Oh, smack my head on the camera. <laughs> and one at two. Okay. The center lines here are where we're going to be drilling our holes. And our holes will be, of course, to hold our crayons. Well, now that we have our lines laid out, this is actually the width of our boat, which ends up to be two inches. So all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to make some lines here. I'm going to start at the one inch mark just to get me away from the edge. And we're going to come in three and a half inches. And we're going to place a line across at three and a half inches. From there, we're going to come in at every half inch interval all the way until we have eight lines all the way across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm short one. Then we're going to come out one more inch and then another two inches. That will be the end of our boat. Now at this point in time, if we want, we can actually sh add one more line here and that will be at the two and a half inch mark. Well, now it's time to make our boat shape. And it's, it's really up to your imagination what you want to do. Now I've got a set of French curves here. I'm just going to extend my center line because I can see it didn't go right to the end of my boat there. And from this line that we placed here, we're going to take a French curve from that line all the way up to the front of our boat just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, if you wanted to, you could do the uh, masking tape method that I have shown you guys before, where you place masking tape on the uh, French curves to get the exact same curve. And there we go. There is the front of our boat. Now, this is kind of like a freight liner kind of thing. So the back end of the boat, we're just going to curve this around and it's not really any kind of, I don't, I don't know. It's, there's no particular shape. It's all up to you here. I'm kind of just playing around to see what shape I like best. And I think I like this. Yes, that looks good to me. Okay. So we'll do the same on this side here to make the back of our boat. 
just like that. Now, this here is the template for our boat. So I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and cut this out, and then I'm going to come back and see you because you don't need a video of me cutting this on the scroll saw. And there we have the template of our boat. Now, truth be told, the only purpose of this template is for the outer perimeter or the profile of our boat. The rest on each individual boat, it's, it's just a matter of just simple marking, that's all. So, but we're gonna go through that, but we need to pick out our stock. And I have some scrap pieces of cherry, so I think that's what I'm gonna make this one boat out of. Well, I have a scrap piece of cherry here, and this is what I've decided to make my crayon boats out of. And this piece is two and a half inches wide. It is about a foot long, and it's seven eighths of an inch thick. And the first thing that you want to do for your layout of this is put a center line on it from end to end. Now that center line, if the piece is two and a half, of course, will be at one and one quarter. As well, we're going to come out from that line by half an inch. Just like that. And then another half an inch. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. So out from our, out from our center line, one half of an inch, and then another half. Now this will provide us with the width of our crayon boat, which is now two inches. So from your outside line to your outside line, it should be two inches. And yes, we're right on the money there. I'm measuring from the one for a little more accuracy with a tape measure, and we're at two inches. So our first line that you want to draw for your layout line will be representative of the end of the boat. And we're gonna bring it in one inch in from the edge just to give us some room to work. Then we're gonna come in another two and a half inches from there. And then every half inch until we get eight lines. So there's our second line, third, there's the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and there is the eighth. Then we're going to put another line one more inch back, and that will be the end of our layout lines. Now, from there, we want to get our boat, and we're going to line it up with our center line right here at this end and the center line at the other end. And once we're happy with how it's lined up, we're just going to trace the perimeter. Now what this will do is it's going to give us the shape of the front and the back of our crayon boat. Well, what I've done is from our last crayon mark right here at the front, at the bow of our boat, I've come back one inch and we're going to transfer these marks. This one here and the one that is one inch behind, we're going to turn our boat 90 degrees, just like this, and we're going to transfer those marks that are one inch outside of our crayon marks. So that would be this one and this one here that's back here. Now what we're going to want to do as well is place a mark at five eighths of an inch from the bottom of your boat all the way across, just like that. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting this out here. So just draw yourself a curved line. And that will actually be cut out at some point in time. The next step we want to do is mark for the holes or center punch rather for our holes for our crayons. 
Now those marks are all of these inside. Now I have a 24 pack of crayons, so I am going to require 24 holes. So they will start here, and then we will mark eight rows of three, just as we've done here on our piece of cherry. That is our grid, and that is the marks for our crayons. So we're just gonna go through and center punch them all, and then we'll head over to the drill press. Well, our next step is to drill our holes for our crayons. And that is an 11 32nd inch diameter bit. We're going to drill it as deep as we can without causing a through hole. So I've got a depth stop set there. And once you've got everything set up, you can drill all your holes. Now I'm using a fence just to keep all the holes aligned here so that they all look a little more perfect. And don't forget, this is a job that you can get your young ones to do. Uh, with a little bit of supervision, there's no reason they can't use a drill press. Now because we've made things symmetrical, all we have to do to get the other side holes here is just turn the boat around and it should be the exact same measurement and we can just go across and drill the next eight holes. And now all you have to do is reposition your fence to do your center row of eight holes. Well, now that you've got all of your holes for your crayons drilled, it's time to cut out this section that we drew here on this 90 degree face. And what you need to do is check your blade for square. I've got a 3 16 inch blade that's 10 teeth per inch here. So we're gonna check our blade for square and we're gonna carefully cut out this small little section here. Well, as the saw winds down here, you may have noticed in that last clip that the cut wasn't square. And look at the piece that's cut off. Even though I checked the blade for square, something went a little funky and I'm not sure what, but it's not even close. So no, no harm, no foul. I was able to very carefully check the blade again, reset it and just run it through using the top edge as my guide and from there, just cut off this little sliver off the bottom, which then squared up both of my cuts on each end. So don't worry about it too much if things get a little kind of wonky there, but you can always fix it. And you know what? It's a kid's project. Have fun with it. Now forever and a day, I am telling you guys, check your blades for square. We went through it with the band saw, but this time we're actually gonna knock our scroll saw out of square. And we're gonna dial it in to the right, about 12 and a half degrees. Now it's not an exact science, but roughly 12 and a half. This scale on this saw is fairly accurate. So now that it's dialed in, we need to cut our crayon boat out. So now that you have the table tilted to the right, or in my case, the blade to the left, you need to cut the boat out. Just remember that you've lost these lines from where you cut out this recess. So you're gonna wanna start at the tip after you redraw these lines. Start from the very tip of the bow and cut the boat counterclockwise. Don't cut it clockwise because if you do that, you're going to have an issue. The boat is not gonna face the right way. So let's get this thing cut out. And now that we have that cut out, one of my favorite parts now is when you take it out of the middle and get rid of this off cut. 
And look at that. That is sexy. I love it. Look at that angle all the way around. That just looks perfect. Well, at this point that you have it to this stage, you now want to sand it. Sand all the way around the edges, sand the bottom, sand these top surfaces, especially in here where you cut it with the bandsaw. And then we have a couple more pieces to add. And then once we get that done, I'll show you where we go from there. And this is the part of the build where we get to have just a little bit of fun and use your imagination. And for this, I've just cut some pieces. I mean, you can cut them however you want, but this is what I've done for the control tower. And I've got a little uh, 5 16 dowel that I've drilled a hole for here. And I'm going to glue this in place for the smokestack. It goes in a little further than that. So what we're going to do is glue this in place. And once we get that done, well, the build is pretty much finished at that point in time. Well, at this point now, there isn't much left to do other than load them up with crayons. And I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. But I'm going to go through and load all of this up with crayons, and I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. Crayon boats. Guys, this project is epic. What more could you ask for? Simplicity, fun, quality time with your children, a toy that they can play with, something they can organize their crayons with to keep it from all over the floor or all over their coloring desk or whatever. Quality time with your children and an opportunity to get them out into the shop to let them experience something other than an electronic device. Why stop at a freight ship? Why not have speedboats, tugboats? I mean, any kind of boat you can think of. How about a battleship? <laughs> Guys. Think about it. The possibilities on this are completely endless for a little bit of scrap material and a box of crayons. Get a larger box, build several boats that all go together with different colors. This boat has greens, this boat has reds, oranges, yellows, etc, etc. Bring out that creative ability that your children have, get them out into the shop, and pass our craft on to future generations, because if we don't do it, guys, who will? Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so you get notifications of future episodes of the show. And guys, I honestly hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.